Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The next topic of our discussion is gastric adenocarcinoma. So gastric adenocarcinoma means the malignant tumor of the gastric epithelial cells. Adeno means glandular and carcinoma means malignant tumor of epithelial cells. Gastric adenocarcinoma constitutes almost 90 to 95% of all stomach cancers and it occurs in two main forms. The first is intestinal type carcinoma and the second is infiltrative carcinoma. The risk factors of gastric adenocarcinoma include smoked food, H. pylori infections typically increase the risk of intestinal type adenocarcinoma whereas H. pylori does not increase the risk of infiltrative carcinoma. Moreover, nitrosamines and certain dietary factors also result in gastric carcinoma. The dietary factors include lack of antioxidants such as vitamin C and citrus fruits and also the lack of dietary fibers. There is a play of genetic mutations resulting in gastric adenocarcinoma. So there is mutation in tumor suppressor genes which is mostly P53 and P16. These tumor suppressor genes normally control the cell division keeping the cell proliferation under a check. There is a loss of function in these tumor suppressor genes which result in an uncontrolled, unsupervised growth of the epithelial cells. Moreover, the proto-oncogenes include transforming growth factor beta and insulin-like growth factors. Moreover, there is also a mutation of beta-catenin gene. These genes are proto-oncogenes which means they normally result in cell division and cell proliferation. So the proto-oncogenes undergo a gain of function mutation which means their function gets enhanced resulting in an increased cell growth and cell proliferation. So the mutations in tumor suppressor genes and proto-oncogenes result in the formation of adenocarcinoma of the stomach. In infiltrative type of gastric adenocarcinoma, there is a mutation in CDH1 gene which encodes for a protein known as E. cadrin. This E. cadrin is responsible for the epithelial adhesions. Hence, the mutation in CDH1 gene results in loss of these epithelial adhesions. Therefore, the tumor cells in infiltrative type of adenocarcinoma are scattered, but they are not forming any particular pattern. So coming on towards the morphology of gastric adenocarcinoma. So gastric adenocarcinoma forms either an infiltrative growth or an exophytic ulcerated growth. Almost 30 to 40 percent of the gastric adenocarcinoma have an infiltrative growth whereas the exophytic or ulcerated growth is a feature of intestinal type of adenocarcinoma and it constitutes almost 50 to 60 percent of all gastric adenocarcinomas. The intestinal type of gastric carcinoma is actually an adenocarcinoma which means it is forming mucinous glands. As you can see here these are the glands formed in the intestinal type of carcinoma. These glands are composed of the neoplastic cells and they are filled with the mucin. Moreover the infiltrative carcinoma is composed of scattered cells and they are not forming any particular pattern due to loss of cellular adhesions. The second point is about the cell characters. In the intestinal type of gastric adenocarcinoma, the cells are mostly glandular epithelial cells. These cells could range from well differentiated to poorly differentiated cells. And these cells form tumorous glands. The particular feature about the infiltrative carcinoma is that the cells are known as signet ring cells. The tumor cells in the infiltrative gastric carcinoma are large and they have an extensive mucin vacuole. This mucin vacuole pushes the nucleus towards the periphery, hence forming a signet ring like appearance. As you can see here, this is a signet ring cell, round cell with the peripheral nucleus and an extensive cytoplasm. The tumor cells in both infiltrative gastric carcinoma and intestinal type of gastric adenocarcinoma secrete mucin. Therefore, in certain areas of the stomach wall, there is excessive mucin secretion forming a mucin lake. Third point about tumor morphology is the specific character of the tumor. 
So in this case, the infiltrative tumors initiate a desmoplastic reaction. Desmoplastic reaction means there is increased collagen deposition. This excessive collagen deposition results in the loss of gastric rugal folds and giving the wall of stomach a leathery appearance. This leathery appearance is known as leather bottle appearance or linitis plastica. So in linitis plastica or leather bottle appearance, the stomach wall becomes stiff and smooth because of loss of rugal folds within the stomach. The fourth feature is the presence of mitotic bodies which is abundant in the malignant tumors and focal necrosis is the hallmark of malignancy. The gastric tumors metastasize through either blood or lymphatics. The metastasis through blood is to the lungs and more particularly in the ovaries. The metastatic cancer in the ovaries is known as Krukenberg tumor which is characterized by the presence of signet ring cells within the tumor. The lymphatic spread is to the supraclavicular lymph nodes causing its swelling. These swollen lymph nodes containing the metastatic tumor are known as virtuous nodes. Moreover, the tumor also spreads to the periumbilical lymph nodes resulting in the formation of an abdominal nodule which is known as Sister Joseph Mary nodules. So like all the cancers, gastric adenocarcinoma also has a slow and insidious onset. Therefore, it is mostly discovered in the age more than 50 years. The disease is more common amongst the males rather than the females, the ratio being 2 ratio 1. Once the disease starts to present itself, the signs and symptoms of chronic gastritis appear and it is often misdiagnosed as chronic gastritis. The signs and symptoms include dyspepsia, epigastric abdominal pain, burning sensation in the stomach and moreover in certain cases hematemesis might also be present. Mostly in this case the tumor is discovered accidentally on the endoscopy and biopsy. The more apparent symptoms of the gastric carcinoma include weight loss and a nodular swelling present on the neck and often in the abdomen. The nodular swelling on the neck is known as virtuous nodes whereas in the abdomen it is due to sister Joseph Mary nodules. The biopsy is mostly taken on the endosco endoscopy and the definite diagnosis of the disease is established on histological studies of the disease. Radiological imaging is also done for the determination of tumor extension and metastasis of the tumor. The tumor commonly metastasizes to lungs, ovaries and lymph nodes. Moreover, the tumor can also extend into peritoneum and liver. The treatment for gastric adenocarcinoma is surgical resection of the tumor, local radiations and chemotherapy. In the early cases of the cancer, the prognosis is better with the 5 year survival rate greater than 90% whereas in the late cases the prognosis is poor with 5 year survival rate less than 20%. So this brings us to the end of discussion about gastric adenocarcinoma. If you have any questions do let us know in the comment section. Thank you.